Hello and welcome everybody. This is again the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's episode we are going to talk about the principles of control design. And when it comes to control design I need an expert, I need a specialist, so thanks very much to have you on board. Hi Daniel. Hi everyone. Hi, um, could you say some words about yourself? Just okay, introduce yeah. yourself briefly. My name is Daniel, mm -hmm. I'm electrical engineer, I'm application engineer now at the MathWorks okay. and here in Germany. And I'm doing control design and focus on physical modeling. Okay. Yeah. Well, control design is important for today's episode. So what are we going to do? We are um, going to talk about the classical control design workflow. So for that, we've just um, chosen a device. In that case, you can see it, it's a throttle. Yeah. We will set up a plant model of that throttle and then directly dive into creation and tuning of a controller. And we will touch two more topics, which are creating a robust controller that is able to withstand all the uncertainties that might happen. And secondly, to tune the response of the controller to a, well, a certain requirement. Um, well, we've already introduced this throttle example. Um, you should not be um, scared about the equations we present here. So what we simply assume is we have a throttle valve and there are three torques acting on that. First, the spring that always pulls the throttle back to the initial position. Secondly, the torque of the motor that acts on the throttle. And third, we have introduced a damping behavior, well, something like friction, which can occur in every mechanical system. What you see here is all the equations written down. Then they are resolved for theta double dot. You will see why this is important. You will also see the parameters. And the resolution form for the equation to theta double dot is important to set up the model. Well, setting up a Simulink model is very easy. What you see, we have theta double dot, so the double dot time derivative of our angle. We integrate it twice, afterwards we get the angle. And this allows us also to introduce all the parameters that we have defined. I think starting from that model, which is a pretty basic and easy assumption of a throttle, um, I will hand it over to Daniel, who will show us how to control that system. Okay, so let's start from this point. From mm -hmm. Christoph here, we see the plant model. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to change to Simulink, yep. and you will, uh, you're going to see the same model. So let's change to MATLAB Simulink. Here you see the same model again. Starting from the left side, we have here the voltage applied mm -hmm. to our device mm -hmm. and the angle is the reaction of, our of the plant. throttle. Mm -hmm. Okay, first thing we're going to do before we do the control design, we select all the blocks mm -hmm. and create a subsystem, which mm -hmm. makes it a lot. I really recommend to do this because mm -hmm. this hierarchical structure makes it mm -hmm. so much easy to... Yep. To, to model and to understand your system, especially if someone else is looking mm -hmm. at your system. Okay, it's well, just um, to recap on how you do it, uh, on how you do it, just you select everything. all the blocks. Yeah. Um, and then you see a blue mark here and just click on create substance. And then you can mm -hmm. create another substance. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we come in here in with the voltage, mm -hmm. we go out with an angle. Yep. Okay, so far. We also can change the name of this one. Let's say that's the plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next thing I want to present is a very cool feature from mm -hmm. the actual release, which is 2015A. Mm -hmm. You just click to add, we now want to add a block to the model, mm -hmm. a controller. We want to use a PID controller okay. for this plant, because it's a typical controller used mm -hmm. for things like that. And I mm -hmm. just click into the and type PID. And mm -hmm. now it gives me all the blocks in the Simulink library, which are some kind connected with PID. Mm -hmm. I want the first one, the Simulink PID mm -hmm. controller. Just hit enter. Okay, here's the block. Now I connect it to my model, just mm -hmm. drop it in and okay. that's it. Okay, that's Perfect. our PID controller. Next step is that's not anymore the voltage which is applied. That would be the reference mm -hmm. or better to say, we want to do a control. So you have to, we have to close the control loop. Yep. We get here reference in, mm -hmm. do here a sum okay. with the reference go to the control, then to the plant, and then away. Perfect. So yep. first thing is we need the sum. Again, Same approach click here. one, yep. sum, okay. Now we get an option list of signs. Mm -hmm. What we want to have, we get the reference in, which mm -hmm. is positive, yep. but we want the feedback from our plant, we want mm -hmm. to subtract it. Subtract That's the error, let's say. Subtract the error, mm -hmm. in, in, to get the error. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we subtract from our reference signal, we subtract mm -hmm. the current, Okay. Status, mm -hmm. and then we get the error. Okay. And for that, I first use those signs. The first one means 
there's no connection. Mm -hmm. This means the above. Yep. Then we come our plus, plus, and, and then we want to subtract. That's minus. Hit enter. Bam. That's the block we want. Cool. Mm -hmm. Connect this one. Quite easy. We don't need the angle anymore. Mm -hmm. I just delete those blocks here. Mm -hmm. Select them and delete. Okay, what we're now doing, going to add is we need now a reference for mm -hmm. our signal. In order to be flexible and to create, maybe what the only we want to do is different scenarios mm -hmm. or thing. For that, we use a very flexible tool, which is the Signal Builder block. Mm -hmm. So I type in Signal, Signal Builder. Mm -hmm. So that's this block. Okay. And connect well, it. We also could use a classical step function. Yeah. But let's have a look at the Signal Builder. Yeah, and the, the additional capabilities. The nice thing of the signal builder block, mm -hmm. you can group your signals. You cannot mm -hmm. only have one signal. Yeah, multiple you have signals. Multiple, multiple signals. You can also have different scenarios and mm -hmm. simulate them all or only mm -hmm. simulate one of those. Okay. You can also import spreadsheet, Excel ah, spreadsheet okay. or data, mm -hmm. which makes it easy. If yeah. you have, for example, drive cycle, yep. which is you can directly import it and work with this one. Okay. But you can also interact with change your signal as Perfect. you want to have mm -hmm. it or if you want to have this dot like this yep. you see it's quite easy mm -hmm. and now we want to replace the signal with a step because okay. you should use yep. step for, yep. for control design mm -hmm. introduce the step now here our maximum signal this one is the reference angle we want to go from an oh uh, from a closed position mm -hmm. to a fully open position in our example mm -hmm. simple example you can also use more well, in that case, I think it makes perfect sense. And we go up to 90 degrees, complete open throttle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, hit here the 90. Mm -hmm. And that's so I have the, I can also move it upstairs, but in this way, I have exactly yep. the 90. Perfect. Okay, makes that's, sense. Mm -hmm. that's our signal. Let's close it. Now, let's go back. Just here. You have here the reference signal. We subtract in order to get the error, mm -hmm. our plant signal. Then mm -hmm. we do the control, the plant, and that's it. Set. Yep. Okay, now we could simulate the model, but we want to also see our simulation yeah. results. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, we might could add a scope block to this and make it more, but this makes the model more complicated. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to avoid this, and that's why we click on the signal we want to look at, mm -hmm. create and connect the viewer, okay. and create a new scope. For well, that. which is also a scope. I think the advantage of that feature is you can add multiple signals to the same scope. As that's the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also a signal scope manager. We mm -hmm. won't look at this one, but where you can manage okay. all your signals. But here you see there's a scope. Mm -hmm. We also want to look how our plant behaves. Mm -hmm. So we also create here one and connect this one to the to scope. The view. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So now we have the two signals in this one. Let's yep. simulate. Yep. And let's have a look at our signal. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's our current. So we have behavior. about the right behavior. So we start with a, a closed throttle, then yeah. apply the step until full opening. What we see when zooming in to a bit to the signal, we have a quite blurry behavior. So it's overshoot and then some vibrations. And this is actually what we are going to improve now. We want to fix this problem mm -hmm. to have the system behavior we mm -hmm. really want to have and not like this. Okay. We want to define it, mm -hmm. but let's, let's see. Okay. okay. First, we go in into this block. Mm -hmm. Here we can influence our system behavior. Mm -hmm. Just a question at that point, Daniel, you mentioned it before, but why at that point is the PID controller the classical choice? Could we have um, taken other choices or why did we choose that one here? The PID controller, let's say it's the, the typical or mm -hmm. the mostly used controller. Yeah. The good thing about this one is you can use linear control theory. Okay. So you can say, okay, the stable mm -hmm. in this working plan, mm -hmm. our system mm -hmm. is stable. Okay. It's more easy to say okay. something about robustness. Yeah. And the problem of nonlinear control design yeah. is that it's very specific for okay. application. Okay. So the good thing about PID is you can almost apply it for, let's okay. say, 90% of okay. applications. So okay. then it's a good start. Yeah, point. we can summarize it like that for linear controls. And yeah. in that episode, we are actually focusing on linear controls. PID is pretty common. Yeah, yeah. PID is the standard. Okay, it's the perfect mostly used. Now we want to change our system behavior. In order to do this, mm -hmm. we change the parameters of this mm -hmm. block, which are the proportion, integral, and derivative. That's mm -hmm. why it's called PID. Yep. Those three parameters. We want now to optimize them. Yep. Or to change them. Okay, 
First, I define them not as values. I want to use a workspace variable, which okay. I predefine. Mm -hmm. So I predefine for the proportional a value of p, which is one in the workspace. Mm -hmm. The same for the integral one. Well, you pretty much specify the same values, um, but as parameters and not as fixed values. So we have more mm -hmm. options yep. and we can later save it and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes perfect sense here. Yep. Apply. Okay, now we have those values. Now we could change those values, do things to have another system behavior, but the most convenient thing is, is you see here a button which is called mm -hmm. Tune. Mm -hmm. We just use this button. Yeah, let's just, try that out. If mm -hmm. you have MATLAB Simulink, just try it out. It's a cool feature. It's a mm -hmm. really cool feature. If I click on this one, now it's starting the linearization. After linearization, here the plot shows a suggestion mm -hmm. of a new tuned response and it shows the current response. Okay, so dotted line is the current system, um, full line is the tuned system. Okay. So yeah. how are we actually tuning a system? Yeah, that's now, you see here the two slider bars, mm -hmm. which are in a time domain. Yep. So here you can directly tune mm -hmm. and get a different behavior. Perfect, okay. You see also here the parameters mm -hmm. of this. Yes, so you have also some about performance and robustness. Mm -hmm. You see it here directly, the comparison between the current mm -hmm. and the tuned one. Okay. In order to talk about those values like gain and phase margin, mm -hmm. let's have a look on the frequency behavior. Okay. For that, we add a plot, a body plot, and an open loop plot of mm -hmm. our system. Okay, now you see it here. Again, we see our plot response and the tuned response. Mm -hmm. And now the way you shown are here, the gain margin and phase margin are the margins mm -hmm. of the tuned and the plot response mm -hmm. of our plant. So we can say here, okay, phase margin 69 is quite good value mm -hmm. you see it's also saying it's stable okay the same with the game matching looks quite good so mm -hmm. we have a stable controller and the good thing is our um, algorithm here guarantees us a stable plant except okay. depending on our mm -hmm. if you see at the face margin and the game margin and everything it looks always good mm -hmm. makes sense perfect okay now let's look if we also have it in the time domain let's make it maybe a little bit faster Mm -hmm. And let's go with this value. Okay. Or if it's nice for you, it's okay. No, let's, let's go for that. One. Updated block. That now, means yeah. our peak ID controller is automatically tuned. Yeah. Now those mm -hmm. values are applied to the mm -hmm. variables in our workspace. Okay. And we can close our model. Okay. They apply to those values. Let's close this one and mm -hmm. let's do a simulation again. Okay. Have a look at the values. Okay. Have a look at the scope again. Well, what we see is a much smoother behavior. And it's reaching the 90 degrees a lot faster. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's faster, but we mm -hmm. have a high overshoot. Now mm -hmm. we can change the overshoot behavior things. Well, this is the way how we can tune actually our control. Yeah. So now let me ask one question. Um, we have talked about that, uncertainties. Yeah. Basically, imagine that we have a model that is not 100% right. So yeah. For example, um, if we go back to the model, Oh, let's say it's not right, but if it's it's if it's uncertain, if there are ways exactly. it's not exactly known. So, okay. So yeah. do we have a workflow to overcome that? Okay, yeah. I mm -hmm. already prepared something for that. Mm -hmm. It's for the damping. Here mm -hmm. for this coefficient, it's zero point zero four. But you know mm -hmm. from you not always know and it mm -hmm. always also depends. Yeah. The well, in that friction. case, it's an actually a very good example yeah. because, well, friction is involved in every throttle and depending on the dirt that accumulates in the throttle, that damping Weary, value might yeah. actually change. Yeah. So how can we, well, model that uncertainties that might happen and also might affect our control quality? In order to show one possibility mm -hmm. how you can do this in linear control mm -hmm. theory, we now apply here to this block we can also say for the linear analysis, we have mm -hmm. a specific block linearization. Okay. okay, let's try this one. We highlight, we use this one, mm -hmm. and we use a MATLAB expression. This one, which I prepared, is a uncertainty mm -hmm. of the parameter, KD, which is nominal, though 0 0.04, mm -hmm. but um, the tolerance is 20%. Okay. This means it's... We don't know the value exactly, okay. but we know it's in the range of 20%. Plus minus 20%. Well, and, and that's what That's we a need. pretty realistic case. Well, I would use the tested values um, in your case, but just to show the workflow, it's a pretty good example yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And you can also say, okay, it's not only in percent, you can also specific yeah. a range or things yeah. like that. And we can do that for every parameter where we are not really sure of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And in this way, we can include those uncertainties mm -hmm. in our model. Okay, cool. So let's, let's try that. We were talking about linearization in mm -hmm. our PID control. We did it implicitly when we did the, 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 mm -hmm. the tuning of our parameter. Now we want to do a linearization mm -hmm. of our plant model, of our whole system from this signal to this one. Mm -hmm. In order to be, to get, that we can do that, mm -hmm. we have to define here an analysis point. Okay. Here we want to inject, we do we want to do an input perturbation. Mm -hmm. Here we apply our signal for the linearization. Okay. And after the plant here, we say, okay, here, we, we want to measure the measurement. Okay, output yeah. measurement. Mm -hmm. So now we have the plant behavior between those two points. Well, and we actually want to model those uncertainties between the well, input and the, the output. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now the next step is a control design linear analysis. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay, let's start the user interface. Okay, now we have here some options. Mm -hmm. We can do a step, a body, mm -hmm. imports, or different things. Mm -hmm. Let's start with a step. Well, let's stick to the step function, yep. And now it's doing the linearization between the two points. Mm -hmm. And already here in the workspace, we see an uncertain system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see this one, USS. If it's here, it's an uncertain state, state space, space model, model with mm -hmm. one output, one input, four states. Okay. That's our system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, these are all the values between, but we don't know if this one really is the worst case. Which mm -hmm. one is the worst case scenario? For example, mm -hmm. yeah, let's talk about the, the overshoot. Well, of this we, we actually see the worst case. Yeah. Well, we see one curve is probably the one with the most overshoot, but we don't know the parameters behind. So which, same, which yeah. uncertainty or which parameter um, is exactly fulfilling that curve? Okay, in order to do this, we have mm -hmm. this model here, the uncertain mm -hmm. state space model. We can import it directly to the MATLAB workspace. Oh, really? You just drag it over to the drag MATLAB and drop, and wow, it's now cool. in the MATLAB workspace. Mm -hmm. And so now we have all possibilities mm -hmm. in MATLAB to find all those values. Great. Well, let's do that. Yeah, let's change to MATLAB. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're here in the comment window. Here you can apply function and do calculations. Yep. The good thing about this later, you can all script it. Yep. Just create a script and then yep. you can run it directly without mm -hmm. having to enter everything. Okay, let's start first. We want to find the worst case. Yep. The worst case, what you said in this case, for the, for the gain, which means where's the highest overshoot. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, let's do that. Okay, you use a certain function that is called WC gain. Yeah. Okay. This one is applied on our lenses mm -hmm. and we get back from this function the maximum gain okay. Okay. and the worst case values, Value. Perfect. which are the worst case values for our uncertainties. Okay, well, let's see. Okay. Now we so see. So what, what we already get here, yeah. um, we have the KD value, yeah. the 0, 0.48. And this is exactly the upper bound of our uncertainty. So the more friction we have, well, we the more we run into the worst case scenario. Okay. Okay. In this case, it looks quite simple. You can, mm -hmm. but if you have more uncertainties and if it's getting more complex, okay. In this way, you can yeah. really include all effects. Okay. Not only the effects you understand, okay. you also get the the mm -hmm. if they are connected in some way or things. So you get really the worst case. Perfect. Well, that makes especially uh, when you. Uh, when you're working on more complex system, you yeah. have more uncertainties. I think this feature pretty much gives you great confidence in your system. Yeah. Because at the end, well, you cannot check every variable and this truly can tell you the, the worst case. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the next step, I want to show how you can also plot yep. those worst case in comparison mm -hmm. to the existing ones. Yep. In order to do that, there's also a function which we have mm -hmm. to use. It's this one. It's the use subs function, mm -hmm. also from Robust Control Toolbox. Mm -hmm. You apply on the lenses one, it looks with those values mm -hmm. and gives you back the system okay. well, for the worst case. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have our system. Mm -hmm. Next step, you see it also here in the MATLAB workspace, that's mm -hmm. the system worst. worst case, yep. And we have here all the systems. Mm -hmm. Next step is now we can plot those yep. two. Mm -hmm. For example, in the stop or a step function, do you want to have a body? No, we have a, we have a step function here anyway, so it would be cool to have it in the same plot. Okay, let's do a step function. Mm -hmm. You see here now what I entered is a step from the lenses mm -hmm. and this is worst. Yep. 
let's go with it. Okay, and we get our step response. So it's the red curve. Well, yeah, exactly. Let's, let's the, zoom in yeah. to have a better view mm -hmm. on it. But this is exactly uh, exactly what we expected. So we wanted the scenario with the most overshoot, with the yeah. most gain. Um, well, that's a pretty nice proof of concept. Yeah. And I, I can see the power behind that for more complex systems. Yeah. It really helps. Yeah. Makes life easy in that case. And it makes your system more robust. Okay. And in that case, you really can be sure, well, in terms of um, overshoot it, or in terms of gain, this setting is actually your worst case. Yeah. That means all other settings are not harmful to your system. Okay. Especially if you have some experience, okay, and based mm -hmm. on temperature, okay, we have the experience that this warrior can be in this range. Mm -hmm. You can directly apply yeah. it to your control design okay. workflow and hence. Okay. Cool. Get a so stable control now we've, and robust. We've also promised you to um, talk a bit about optimization. So the classical scenario here is um, we tuned our controller and we are pretty sure that we can overcome the worst case scenario. Yeah. But what are if what are if we have certain restrictions? How could I model um, certain restrictions so that the controller uh, the controller doesn't violate those restrictions? Okay, that's a new thing you're talking mm -hmm. about or a new aspect which we yeah. can use as well. We're now leaving the linear analysis. Okay. Besides linear analysis, we have also the possibility to use optimization. Mm -hmm. And optimization is really powerful. Okay. Because as you said, if we have restriction or in general, more generally, if you have requirements, okay. you can define requirements for mm -hmm. your system. For example, you want to have the overshoot not to be more than 10% or well, you have to do the let's rising exactly time. Let's exactly try that. Let's do that in the model. I'm changing for that back to the Simulink model. Mm -hmm. And now the tool where, where I was talking about is... Uh, response optimization. Mm -hmm. It's analysis, response optimization. Mm -hmm. Let's start this. Okay. And now we see again here the design variables and mm -hmm. also the uncertain variable set, okay. which we can define here. So we are not losing the uncertainty information. No, we can do it's this perfect. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to de de define our design variable set mm -hmm. by clicking on this one and say, let's define some new variables. Mm -hmm. And for this, we select all of our control. Mm -hmm. All makes sense yeah. because we want to optimize all. They're listed all here mm -hmm. and that's okay. Let's Just apply process, them. Yep. apply. And now we talked about requirements of yep. our system. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Here you see the requirements you can yep. define. We can do it in the time domain. Mm -hmm. different but you can also de define custom requirements okay and also in the frequency domain mm -hmm. well it's a quite pretty powerful. big variety of requirements or restrictions that you can apply mm -hmm. as we're talking about the principles we stick only to some simple example yeah. yep what should what do you want some step response of our or uh, some signal bound but i think for me it's important to have a realistic case so Oh, what about, I'm as an electrical engineer, and now mm -hmm. about the motors, you have mm -hmm. also always a maximum voltage of a motor? Yeah, for example. What about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the model. Here you see this one is the voltage which comes out, mm -hmm. and at the moment we have no idea what's the value of this yep. one. Mm -hmm. Let's, for that, first connect the new viewer, mm -hmm. simulate, Yep. and check out what's the value. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we see okay. here, it's going up to 18 volts. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this is a very realistic case. Great, great thing here, Daniel. Um, what we see that the voltage applied to the throttle is, well, going far beyond the value that it actually needs yeah. um, at the end. Yeah. So just imagine a situation where we have a maximum voltage that we can apply on this um, throttle of, well, 15 or 16 volts. Yeah. That means we have to optimize our controller behavior so that when it controls it, um, it does not reach that maximum limit. Okay. Well, In order to do Sounds this? realistic to me, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Stick with the 15 volts. Say, mm -hmm. Let's say it's the 15 volts. Mm -hmm. For example, or we only have, based on our battery of our, we have only the 2 volt, 12 yeah. volts maximum. Well, Might be an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go with this. So back to the response optimization mm -hmm. tool. Let's define our signal bound. Okay. In that case, a bound, yep. Okay, now we have a constraint, it should mm -hmm. be less than this value. Mm -hmm. And here we can also give... Well, in the time domain and also specify the amplitude, okay. Yeah, well, let's define here the 15 volts. Mm -hmm. And in at 10 seconds, the same. Well, I'm going to have a linear behavior, okay. And it's a linear bound. 
So yeah, mm-hmm. looks good. Yep. Now we have to select the signal. Okay, so how do you select the signal? Press the plus sign. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. No signals have currently been selected. Okay. Okay, so you just go to Simulink, select your signal. Let's do that. Wow, cool. Select the mm-hmm. signal, go back. And we here have it. it is. Cool. Mm-hmm. Let's go with this one. Hit OK. So basically now we have specified. Oh, I think I forgot here. I put only the one. Let's change this one. To okay, 15. the amplitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, well, that's a, just an assumption. The, the voltage amplitude is the same at any time. Yeah. Not pretty realistic case here. So that means now we have defined our optimization problem. Do we have yeah. to specify anything else? No. Okay. But what we can do is mm-hmm. we can evaluate, evaluate the requirements. If okay. we have more than one, it makes sense. But for mm-hmm. one, it no, makes no sense. Okay. But let's plot the model response. Okay. That makes sense to see mm-hmm. if it's really the way mm-hmm. Well, if we saw the well, simulation. Okay, what we see here, it's actually violating that yeah. restriction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now the next step is to do optimization. There are some mm-hmm. options. We can do parallelization or different algorithms, mm-hmm. but let's start with optimization. Okay, so we process. start with the default set, but for you it's important if you want to have a certain solver uh, being applied, a certain method that can be specified within the options. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's start optimization. Okay. The nice thing about this tool, you do not only see um, what's happening here with the iteration mm-hmm. and the counts and mm-hmm. the signal counts, you only see, all, also see directly the influence uh, or, or how mm-hmm. the requirements are met and what's the looking. And we see now it already converged. Mm-hmm. Just two iterations were necessary yeah. in order to, well, to have a signal that fulfills all the requirements. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. here we see directly. We can also do a zoom, but okay. We have it here. The optimization so far finished. Now we can Mm -hmm. have also a look in the model if it's Mm -hmm. really the case. Exactly. So let's have a, again, a look at the voltage scope. Okay. Well, and for me, it seems to work. Um, The signal stays um, at the 15 volts or yeah. below the 15 volts. Yeah. So let's have a look at how the controller behavior um, or the plant behavior actually is impacted by that. Okay, now you yeah. see here. Mm-hmm. Well, we have the same or similar smooth behavior. Might be that the controller is a bit slower compared to the previous one, but still we, we are stable. We are able to overcome all the uncertainties and we have a optimized signal. Yeah. Perfect. I think, Daniel, thanks a lot at that point. Um, we have learned a lot. This is the classical Simulink workflow. So let's just get back to the slides. First of all, let me recap what we've done so far. We have chosen a model, we've set a a plant model, then we've created and tuned the controller, and then we have to, and then we have done two additional things. We've ensured that our controller even works for uncertain signals, so for changes in the model. And secondly, we have optimized our system to fulfill certain requirements. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. No, I, I, for, for me, that's pretty impressive. And that brings us to the key takeaways of today's session. So, Daniel, would you just go through them and say some words about them? So, okay. what do you think about that? The first thing is contra design is no magic. What mm-hmm. I want to say with this one is even there's a lot of mathematics behind. The things mm-hmm. I've shown, there's a lot of stuff behind. Yeah. But it's no magic. You can yeah. use it. Those tools are thought to use. You don't have to have a PhD in contra design mm-hmm. in order to have a stable and robust control. Okay. That's the first thing. And the design workflows are straightforward Mm -hmm. and usually very similar always. So you can always use the same workflow Mm -hmm. in order to get a robust and stable design. Okay, perfect. And another thing I would, I really like this. It's the worst case analysis. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know the worst cases already Mm -hmm. from experience, but in this way you can even enhance it oh, with, you can with identify it them properly, and yeah. maybe you find a worst case which mm-hmm. you in the in the history mm-hmm. until now didn't find yet. Yep. And so the good thing is, if you already know them, mm-hmm. you don't have problems yep. in the future if you might find yep. them without knowing them. So and well, the last point we are mentioning here is um, the optimization capabilities, which are really bridging the control model to the real world. Yeah. But in reality, you have restrictions, as we have introduced. You have a voltage maximum. And you make sure by the optimization toolbox um, that your control system behaves in a compatible way. Yeah. Perfect. At that point, thanks again, Daniel. I enjoyed that episode. It was really cool. Me too. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Okay, great. Nice. And at that point, well, we've done an episode called Principles of Control Design. 
I think there's many, many material to come up. So we have talked about parameter estimation or different different topics that we could cover that yeah. are, for example... Yeah, let's more robust control mm -hmm. or let's talk about model predictive control. Okay. It's quite interesting mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Perfect. So there are many topics to come up. Um, let us know whether you like that session or whether you, you like that episode. And well, we are happy to do further topics just for you. This brings us already to the end of today's episode. Just for recap, um, if you want to have a look at all the MATLAB Simulink Racing Lounge videos, just go to the dedicated landing page, which is mathworks.com slash racing lounge. If you are interested in information about your Formula Student competition, just go to the dedicated webpage there. And as already mentioned, we are really happy to receiving your feedback, comments, questions. Let us know your feedback using the team email address. It's formulastudent at mathworks.com. And just for those who are not aware of our Formula Student software offer, we have a software offer for your teams. You can access all our tools that we use um, for free. And if you do use our software, would we would be happy if you use our logo on your cars and on your reports as well. So, Thanks again. So please do it at home, <laughs> all the things we just shown here. Yeah, well, yeah. the recommendation is definitely to try all out. Yeah. And if it works, let us know. If it doesn't work, also let us yeah. know. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye.